what is the media and social media today is happening. Uh, that being said, um, it is important to understand that a lot can be said about the decision. Um, so, you know, there's never enough time. So that being said, I'm going to concentrate uh, for the next few uh, Um, and I'll take you through some basic numbers that uh, mean a lot for how professionals like yourself uh, will be communicating going forward. Um, so I would like to start with this small deck, which is about uh, 10 slides, so it won't take much time. So please press uh, play for me there. Um, just a quick brief on uh, the kind of work that I've done over the past 12 years. These are the brands that I've worked with. Um, I'll just name them out to you if uh, the logos don't uh, resonate. Tata uh, Tele Services, obviously Indicom, Tata Communications being part of that family. Uh, 197, which uh, is better known today as Paytm. Uh, in fact, uh, any of you know what Paytm uh, stands for in this room? Exactly. So uh, I was in the room when this name was uh, born, or this brand for that matter, and uh, it came from uh, a gentleman by the name of Abhishek Rajan who is now back at Paytm. He had a brief stint in Mentra in, in the middle. And uh, the idea was to keep it very simple, uh, at the same time uh, make sure there is a certain trademark to uh, the name. And it did both for us. Right? Um, and so I just cut it off and uh, at that time we actually started it to enable uh, rural India with accounts to have money in, uh, especially for people who do not have bank accounts. So it started from that novel idea which has now become a rage uh, in terms of online payments, right? Um, Datacom, this is a New Zealand uh, ITES organization. Surprisingly enough, the biggest uh, investor in this organization is New Zealand Post. Uh, you don't get to see this often in India, of course, but uh, in developed world, uh, government organizations, CSUs, actually are the biggest invest investors in some of their uh, organizations. Uh, Jericho Digital Communications is a brand I started uh, uh, during my stint in Sydney. Uh, we started off uh, with a very soft-coded uh, email marketing platform uh, which helped us to uh, reach out to pretty much you know, any user uh, across the globe, uh, market to them in a very, very simplified manner. Um, I would love to take you through uh, you know, that platform to, to those who uh, can make uh, some coding sense of it, but yeah, maybe on a one-to-one on -a -one basis. Uh, Media Moments, again a, a fairly small organization, but interestingly enough, operating out of Bangalore, a 30 member team, uh, does uh, some pretty good corporate PR work. But what sets them apart is uh, they're very good with artificial intelligence and, in fact, using artificial intelligence and virtual reality in some of the events uh, you know, that uh, corporate world uh, does in these days. Um, so that's, you know, one of their uh, uh, key USPs. Um, anybody familiar with uh, the brand Le Eco? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, again, Le Eco started off as LETV, which is uh, China's version of Netflix. And uh, with the money that uh, the founder, Y.T. Uh, uh, his exact name is Jia Yuting, uh, the money he made out of uh, selling content and before content as uh, in China. It's about uh, you know, designing and uh, delivering on mobile technology and uh, hardware. Um, I don't know if uh, all of you are abreast with what happened with this company, but the reason why I put this, put this uh, uh, brand there is it's probably one of the best learnings I've had uh, in a very, very short uh, kind of time. So it took about 18 months for this organization to come into India, uh, make uh, some of the most uh, rapidly uh, gaining revenue in, in about uh, the first six months of launching in India, which was the 20th of Jan in 2016. 
um, and by October of uh, 2016 it started to plummet and by January uh, 2017 the company had to shut down. Uh, it has to its credit uh, selling 2 million devices in under 6 months and for those who are uninitiated to that number it takes uh, a similar organization uh, in terms of you know, branding or where it comes from, so something, something, uh, something like a Huawei in China, which has been in India for about 18 years, they have not been able to do it uh, yet. So uh, the fact that you know, with growth comes a very, very high responsibility, and that responsibility today, uh, especially in terms of your users, uh, and understanding how you need to be able to... Uh, sorry, Uh, how you need to take care of your users through that journey is, is extremely important, which is where online reputation management comes in. Right? Uh, the markets that I work in, as we see, that's one through the brands, so uh, essentially India at the center of and at the heart of uh, everything I do, and uh, represented uh, you know, some of the businesses in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, Hong Kong, for the last, or for that matter, you know, the developed part of China, which is Hong Kong and very neighboring to it, being uh, Shenzhen. Uh, for the last uh, three years or so, and uh, uh, did some good work in Middle East, North Africa, especially during the advent of uh, mobile telephony, uh, with uh, Airtel going as then into uh, Africa, um, and few projects in uh, in the US, mostly West Coast. So this should help you understand the kind of you know, global vision that uh, today this will stand for. Um, this is a very important slide and I would like uh, everyone to take part, you know, two minutes to look at it and, and tell me what is the big difference that they see. So what has changed in the last five years uh, uh, in terms of the most valuable brands uh, in five years alone, right? And five years, trust me, for a business to not exist, to come into the fore is very, very short uh, a time, right? Um, so if you notice, uh, one of the big changes uh, is Google has moved from uh, being at the fifth position from five years ago to the second position. What does that mean? Uh, it is not just on the back of the revenue that they make, but more importantly, the amount of transaction users are having with that organization. Right? And Google today not only stands for uh, the searches that you make uh, or the browsers that you use through your smartphones, but also the devices because they're very quickly getting into the hardware business, right? Um, and the other very, very surprising, uh, you know, name that has come up in the past uh, five years alone is Facebook, which didn't even exist as, you know, part of this valuable brand list till five years ago. And it's now at number four. Uh, so clearly it's, uh, you know, while, uh, and, I, and I think I'm part of uh, a fairly fading generation where we, we saw Facebook come up or we, we saw you know, Google come up in our generation, for that matter even uh, you know, simple, simpler things like mobile uh, phones. Um, and we always you know, put it on the back burner saying you know, it's not at that integral part of our life, but it is here to stay. And uh, whether you like or not, as communication professionals, you will have to adapt to it to be able to make the best sense of how you communicate in the future. Um, the other brand which uh, you, know, you need to take note of is Amazon. And Amazon also didn't exist till about five years ago, and today is at number six globally. Um, does anybody know what is uh, the uh, background of Amazon? What is the, the core business that helped them set up the com business? Is anybody in the room aware of that? Uh, no, not really. I mean, that, that was, so selling books was when they started off with the e-commerce business. Anyone else? No. Who said that? Okay, great. So, the cloud, or rather, uh, Amazon is birthed in uh, two very large, uh, you know, integration platforms, which has helped them become a major player in e-commerce. One is cloud, and the other one is Alexa. So Alexa is their own, um, to simplify it uh, to a certain extent, it is their own program that helps them make sense of data. And uh, that is actually catapulted them 
to the next level, help them uh, grow into other regions as well. And that is their core business. So e-commerce is uh, a successful business for them because they are birthed in Alexa and Cloud and uh, both of some of the largest data farms and uh, data farming capabilities for that matter. Um, interesting level, uh, because I spend a lot of time, you know, uh, pondering over design and it's, it's something that I uh, enjoy doing. Anybody knows, uh, you know, what these logos stand for? But they have a hidden meaning in, in most of them. So, yeah, A to Z is great. Um, anybody aware of what uh, Apple logo stands for? Those are the two ones that I have never heard of, so that's interesting. So I take something back with me. Uh, <laughs> great. Uh, well, the closest uh, uh, analogy to this uh, logo is uh, the fact that, yeah. Um, but there are other theories around, uh, you know, the fact that uh, his inspiration came from another designer uh, who said who was Apple and therefore chose to use that. But essentially, you know, the fact that his uh, content, I don't necessarily mean, uh, you know, content that you consume over television or you know, on your desktop or your mobile, but content in all forms, right, uh, whether it's written, whether it's spoken, whether it's video format, whether it's uh, static, whether it's dynamic, and you'll understand that users are very quickly moving away from programmed content. So, what I mean by that is, our generation is very well aware of the fact that we, whatever we had to do, our you know, days were sectioned out growing up. Right? At least I grew up that way. So, you know, you had to uh, you know, get up uh, at 5 in the morning and be at, at school at 7. You finish that, you, you know, come home, you have uh, probably some bit of homework to do or equation, uh, post it. You know, maybe uh, if you're lucky and if you've been a fairly good boy that day, I would get, you know, about an hour of television. So, you didn't really have a choice. you want to say 
think about how the user would look at it and therefore feel or not feel involved with it. And that will, in, in a very obvious and basic way, answer a lot of uh, doubts you might have in terms of consumption of that information. Right? Uh, so, you know, in terms of uh, the data here, if you see, uh, in the last eight years alone, uh, the consumption of uh, uh, the, the media consumption for that matter has literally doubled in the last eight years. And uh, considering that uh, that is the pace that we're going at with a 31% internet penetration in India today, uh, and still largely you know, uh, the highest growth uh, in terms of internet population, uh, that is only that time frame is only going to get shorter. Which means that you, as uh, communication experts, have to adopt uh, new ways of communicating what you want to say that much more quickly. Again, in terms of uh, you know, social media or uh, you know, the way we interact today, how many of you, uh, when coming to Hyderabad, used uh, the feature of traveling to Hyderabad on Facebook? Did anybody post that? Okay, one person. Okay. Um, so, in fact, you know, it's, I, quite honestly, and nothing against anybody, but I, I find that annoying and also insecure. Um, insecure uh, in terms of a security perspective, not in terms of the emotional perspective. Uh, what many of is wrong with the digital uh, age is the more information you give out about yourself, the more footprint you create about what you're doing. And those who can or want to do anything um, untoward against that have all the information at their hands. Right? Uh, now, we don't take that very seriously. I mean, India is uh, always, you know, a, a great mix of its own problems, uh, which are very, very different than uh, the Western world. And in fact, there are strict norms uh, in the developed world of uh, what age you can allow your children to use phone within an educational environment or an institution. Uh, there are very strict laws in terms of how you want to uh, you know, use certain hashtags, uh, etc. to be able to uh, control a lot of you know, what uh, people are saying or doing in social media. Uh, unfortunately, we are far from that reality in India. Yeah. But that being said, it's a responsibility that each one of us has, you know, one of us has in terms of what information we give out about ourselves. Right? Um, coming back to data for a bit, uh, if you, you know, look at uh, how the data points are put in there, um, the content upload rate on YouTube alone uh, has increased by 60% in the, in the past one year. Um, India alone accounts for more FB or Facebook interactions outside of USA. And for those of you who understand the digital landscape and how it's shaping up, you realize that um, India is at a point where it is only starting to break out in the digital landscape versus markets like USA, Australia, uh, a large part of Europe has actually stalled out, which means uh, there's actually no growth in that space, right? Uh, but India is uh, still uh, beginning to adapt. And mostly, uh, interestingly enough, because of rural India. Um, I've talked about the, uh, upon the content piece uh, earlier also, and it is essentially about you know how relevant your content is, uh, and which is why it will be consumed or not consumed, right? Um, so I was before coming here, I was you know uh, doing research and going through some of the social media pages of NTPC, and I, I just realized that uh, NTPC. Where I felt there was a slight gap was 
a lot of the content that you uh, as a brand are putting up is not optimized for the platform. Uh, now, what do I mean by optimization? Uh, you have to understand that social media works in a very different way. And what I mean by that is uh, content which is snackable or obviously have uh, far more reach. Right? Um, and you should ask yourself that question. So I'm sure uh, all of you being communication uh, professionals uh, do spend a lot of time on social media. Um, what is the kind of content you consume yourself uh, when you're on your news feed? You know, uh, you probably, I'm guessing most of you uh, like photographs of your friends who are probably traveling or anything that they've put up. I'm sure a lot of uh, lights would have gone out from each one of you during uh, the festive season. Uh, apart from that, if you move away from your uh, friends or your followers and what you get from the media back to you, right? So anything which is newsworthy, I'm guessing everybody uh, uh, consumes that kind of content. Uh, a video which is essentially talking about any, any current happening in the news space. Uh, am I correct in assuming that? Yeah. Um, Apart from that, what else? Entertainment? Maybe something to do with movies or just something which is very funny. How many people see cat videos or know what I'm looking at? So if, if, you, uh, if you know cat videos are uh, uh, you know the, the go-to videos to kill time and basically be entertained on YouTube because cats have the knack of doing really funny obvious things. Um, and people actually sit uh, with their cats all day long, week on week, capturing these snippets. So, you know, that's how much time people have in, in Western world, right? Uh, but the point I'm getting at is uh, your content doesn't necessarily always have to be serious, right? Your, your work is, no doubt, I mean, the impact that you, that you have, uh, you know, as a, a public sector unit uh, into the country is obviously enriching a lot of lives, helping a lot of people. But it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, done in a very serious way. That being said, uh, a lot of the work that NDPC does goes through a long process. Right? Each project is months, if not years long. Uh, what I felt uh, was absent in most of these platforms was the fact that you have not put the effort to show how these projects have started know, from uh, an initiation phase to a completion phase. And the journey of these uh, you know, projects actually can be a lot more uh, enriching as, uh, you know, as, as, as not only content, but as an experience that uh, people can consume and make sense of. Right? Um, Right, so, uh, well, it's, it's a much, much longer conversation and, you know, I'll, I'll try to keep it as succinct on that as possible. Uh, the one factor that helps uh, you garner a lot of attention on social media, for that matter, any digital media platform, is um, virality, and I, and I underscore that first, right? Um, and virality uh, has to be understood from a standpoint of what you want to communicate. Uh, do you want to communicate the fact that, uh, okay, we had about, you know, uh, 50 to 60 people come to Hyderabad for the last two days, uh, attend this conclave, maybe, you know, talk about the kind of people who came as speakers and, you know, spoke about their disciplines and went away. Um, or you could take that same experience and I having the pleasure of, uh, you know, meeting some of you last night during the culture program and dinner, uh, there, was, there was a lot of camaraderie, there was a lot of fun. Uh, which people were having. Uh, why not show that side of uh, NTPC as well? I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm sure there are guidelines that you have to also follow in terms of you know what you communicate uh, on your official handles. But you have to understand that it doesn't always have to be uh, just about here is one project uh, that NTPC did and a photograph of that. It can be a lot more. Um, and that being said, the content format that you use itself, uh, you know, is, is very important. Uh, a lot of times, simple one-minute videos will have far the more reach 
as opposed to a simple photogram. Right? Um, putting infographics, uh, a lot of uh, infographics that I was going through were unreadable, even if you zoom them out. So, so understanding that it has to be simplified to a point where it is quickly, uh, you know, consumable when you. Hmm. No, I think, uh, again, I mean, I, I won't know the, uh, the exact details of how these uh, processes work for the organization, but, but what I can assure you is that it is very doable. It doesn't require a lot of, uh, I mean, it's not rocket science, to put it simply. It's actually just understanding and processing what you want to say and uh, approaching it from a point of view that think about it if you were to explain what you do to an eight-year-old and then building it up from there. Right? I mean, that's all the basics that we were taught in this school, that, uh, you know, whatever you do, uh, if you were to explain it to your child, how would you do it? Right? Uh, so, simplification is, is essential. Uh, the fact that what you're doing uh, should have a certain amount of uh, virality, uh, just summarizing point here. And understanding that your content has a self life, right? So that self life is defined by the format that you use, and uh, always saying to that uh, format might not necessarily help. You might think that I'm, you know, uh, putting up a post every, you know, few hours, etc. And sometimes less is more, right? So just doing maybe one post in two days, but making more meaningful content might actually help as opposed to uh, posting three times in a day. Right. Have I answered your question uh, to a certain extent? All right. Um, great. Uh, yeah, the, the, the one uh, big point I want to make here from this slide was um, uh, the new timings of how uh, or when, uh, for that matter, content is consumed now, uh, not just in our country but globally. Um, most of us, I mean, I am I go to bed early, but uh, my time is a different. But I guess I don't uh, represent uh, the majority. 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. So that's three hours, uh, pretty much forward from where uh, you know I grew up consuming content at the time. I, I, I sleep at around 10 a.m. So which yeah, because yeah, uh, and then I get up at about 4 30, So very very different TV altogether. Uh, no, so I'll, uh, I'll I'll correct you on that. So content is there at any given point in time. Unfortunately, the kind of modern life you're leading, that is actually the time you get to consume that content, right? So because earlier on I said that the, the age of program content is gone, so I can choose what I want to consume at the time I want to consume at that, right? Uh, which is why, uh, uh, how many of you are GOT fans here or know the reference? Uh, for those uninitiated, it's Game of Thrones. So, so Game of Thrones is, is you know, uh, probably the most watched uh, series of sitcom of its time. And uh, with the advent of apps like Hotstar uh, on Netflix, yeah. um, and that's where people are actually consuming it. Um, and the other important uh, figure here is the 50%, 51% videos watched with others and not solo, which essentially means that the shareability of content uh, or the fact that, uh, you know, you could um, actually uh, be pretty much in bed, uh, you know, with your partner, looking at your phone, going through a program. The fact that the, the way we consume content from different uh, size screens, right, it's not just about a 42 inch or a 65 inch LCD screen, it's essentially a 5.1 inch screen as well, right. Uh, uh, the opportunity, the fortune, the opportunity of working with uh, Vijay very closely through my days at ADM. Uh, this is a gentleman. Uh, how many of you know the story of Vijay Shekhar Sharma and, and his growth in the industry? Uh, we are the founder and owner of ATM. Uh, very interesting story, and I'd like to take a few minutes to take you through that. Um, so he's what you know we consider a child prodigy. He was. Uh, uh, he actually went in for his uh, engineering 
uh, entrance exam at the age of 13 to, uh, to the Delhi University. And he was denied admission considering he was too young. So he had to wait for years and after a lot of reading he finally got through. Which means he was an engineer by the age of 18. Uh, he came from a very, very humble background, uh, studied in a government Hindi medium school, uh, struggled with English for the most part of his uh, college life. He went on to form a internet organization while studying his engineering degree and sold it to uh, uh, another company which is now been bought over by Microsoft. Uh, at the age of 17, for 1.2 million dollars. And that's where he started uh, his journey as an entrepreneur. Now, with anybody at the age of 17 with 1.2 million dollars, uh, considering that he had already formed an organization and food, one would think would know what he would be doing, you know, as the next step. In Vijay's case, he had no clue. And he attracted a lot of people who, uh, you know, were good and astute, sharp businessmen, which is why they ran away with his money. And he was pretty much left penniless about a year later. Uh, but his hunger for being an entrepreneur continued. And he went on to uh, think in lines of Google. So when Google uh, was talking about its algos on search, he was talking how he could implement some search-related uh, technology but only for the telecom subscribers, which essentially meant that, at the, and this is at a time when internet penetration was not even beginning to be. Um, so hence the name, uh, you know, 197 Communication, which is the uh, which is the parent company. So if you remember, for those of you who might have uh, used DSNL uh, from earlier, 197 was the number you dialed for inquiries. And, and essentially to find somebody you do not know how you know of, maybe their name, but you do not have a phone number. So it was actually a search directory of sorts, right? but only for mobile users. And this search directory was not limited to uh, just people, but also services. Right? And the first service that uh, 197 actually started was, uh, surprisingly enough, astrology. So he was uh, on his travels uh, to the Airtel office in Chandigarh and after dealing with a lot of telecom operators around the country, he realized that uh, you know, there was an opportunity uh, with, within the vast or the value added services business of Airtel, where this gentleman that he met, who was the vast manager of the Chandigarh uh, unit, told him that if you can help me uh, set up a call center of sorts where people will call to know their horoscope. For the day, I'll give you 45 rupees for every caller. So he said, okay, fine. And this 45 rupees I'll give you every month, by the way. So he said, okay, it might be, I mean, obviously he has an act for seeing the opportunity when nobody saw me. And him coming from, uh, Vijay coming from UP, decided to get four pundits from his hometown, set them up in Noida, and start a call center. And that was the inception of 197. What he didn't realize then is how many people were actually interested in the service. And it began as a very simple short code, which is 53030 that you call it, and you get your horoscope for the day. So you can actually talk to a pundit, right? And you explain whatever your your concern, your case, uh, in person and all that. And uh, maybe for about uh, anything between one to five minutes, uh, the pundit on the other side will tell you exactly what your horoscope looks like. Now, consider the growing population of mobile users in India from a time of uh, year 2000, right? From there to now, we are close to a billion now. We have crossed about 850 odd uh, million mobile subscribers. Uh, from a point where we are roughly at about, uh, say, about 150, 200 million. Now, even if 10% of that, which is say 15 million, uh, decides to pay 45 rupees a month for this service, you can do the math again. And uh, from that point on, he went on to uh, start the KTM as well as the mobile payments uh, come till Uber came into India. Because they were the first partners, uh, you know, a mobile wallet of choice because KTM saw an opportunity. Credit card was something that, uh, you know, uh, RBI guidelines didn't allow to be used so freely on an app, etc. 
and then uh, it just catapulted to another level when demonetization happened. Right? How many of you remember some of the some of the innovative uh, uh, advertisements that Paytm came out with during the demonetization phase? Yeah. And and uh, do you, does anybody exactly 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 yeah ATM may ATM too. so. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I mean, I think uh, sometimes you need to risk it, and I think uh, you know the, the private organizations have that bit of leeway, so you you can get away with it. Yeah, correct. Uh, I yeah, I have some very interesting stories on that as well, but uh, maybe on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, so yeah, the the, the fact that uh, you know uh, innovation is constant in terms of you know uh, India being a marketplace for it. Know, evolution is constant. We have to also plan to that. You know, we are communicating and transacting. Right? So essentially, this side of the government. Um, and talking about the online marketplace, so what's happening uh, as, as a big change in e-commerce today? Um, and uh, what is uh, developed economies? Uh, you know, the, the segments or categories that are most searched are essentially electronics and, and technology. In India, it is shoes uh, and uh, clothes or travel and footwear. Uh, what does that say about us? Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily say that, well, maybe our aspiration is not that to that point. It is uh, a reflection of how uh, you know the evolution of e-commerce is shaping up uh, you know, our decisions in India. Uh, and the fact that we understand um, to a large extent, with data that is, you know, comes across to uh, uh, Amazon, Flipkart, uh, or Snapchat, which is now uh, The fact that fashion category itself, or, or the term fashion, uh, is something that attracts, uh, you know, the, the new population, and therefore, the fact that they want to uh, use these platforms to probably take those decisions without having to worry about, you know, going to the parents to to the new store and. Deciding to buy what they want to buy. Uh, very interesting uh, study on that as well. Uh, in terms of communication and, and internet communication, where it's going today, right? Uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of these numbers and it's, it's no uh, secret uh, in terms of why uh, Western organizations are also looking more towards India. Uh, but 30 percent growth annually, that's the big takeaway from this. Uh, nowhere else in the world have we seen a 30% annual growth in terms of internet users growth. And why is that possible? It is possible more because of smartphones. Right? Uh, the fact that we have data capability reaching tier 2, tier 3 cities even, or to an extent now to rural uh, the consumption of data, the consumption of information through these devices is only going to increase. And therefore, it uh, also means that you know how you communicate through these three users becomes that much more important to mobile optimization. Um, that being said, penetration in India in terms of internet users is still only at 31%. Right? So there is still a 69% uh, left for the buy. Right? Um, and it's only, as I said, it's only starting to break out now. India's market along with uh, Surprisingly enough, uh, markets like UAE, where uh, they're trying to. Now, starting to get a little liberal, but uh, fairly conservative in terms of how much technology they allow into their country. Um, we Sorry, say that again. Again, so speed is uh, a direct correlation of the infrastructure. And I think the infrastructure needs to be uh, you know, enabled first, which is why. Uh, Smartphone growth or data consumption through smartphone is much higher, right? So uh, legacy data, or as we say, you know, in terms of last mile connectivity, uh, whether through copper or fiber. Um, Australia is a great example. They started the uh, national broadband network as late as 2012. It's not begun by electricity distribution. Five years. No, so but you know, I I think uh, I don't know how much how much uh, the audience here is aware of this, but we actually have a peripheral uh, wireline uh, layout 
uh, from as early as 2003. Uh, the organization that first started on this journey was Reliance, uh, and they laid out the first fiber network uh, in in a what we call a connected circle basis, which essentially means that if in the rare event of a fiber cut, it still will take a different route and connect, right? So all of that is there. It's, it's a matter of, I think, also the fact that um, uh, something like a geo might surprise most, but it doesn't surprise me as an industry uh, professional because it had to happen because they had the infrastructure. That was the reason why they waited for it. They wanted people to get used to internet before they actually came up with, uh, you know, that solution. Um, Last mile connectivity in, in India is still a challenge because we uh, largely rely on copper wire connectivity um, and not fiber. Uh, the day that starts to change, especially um, cities like Bangalore are a, are a fairly good example. Uh, organizations like ACT FiberNet are already giving close to 5 Mbps uh, you know, upload and download uh, tethering speed, which is huge. Right? Um, and this, this is just to home. I'm not even talking about uh, uh, your professional or industrial usage, which is close to 100 megabits per second. So uh, I think the, the basic infrastructure is there, but uh, a lot needs to also be done from a last mile uh, connectivity point of view. Right. Uh, I, I anyways touched upon this, the fact that you know mobile is uh, actually giving us uh, the highest growth in terms of year-on-year -year, uh, uh, internet usage growth. Um, so what does that mean in terms of, again, you know, the way uh, we use our smartphones, right? Um, some interesting data points here uh, in terms of how many times we actually even look at our phone, uh, 100 times or more. 25% uh, users check their smartphones over 100 times a day. Uh, it's almost become second nature. Also, uh, I think in the millennial generation, it's uh, it's also a good excuse to get away from tricky situations, right? People have, you see people, uh, especially when you, uh, you, you, you can do this yourself when you're traveling the next time, probably on your way back to your respective locations. You'll see when you enter an airport, most people are, uh, you know, with their heads buried in their smartphones, right? Um, I am guilty of uh, actually being in a situation that I found tricky and I just, you know, looked at the phone. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think uh, while it is taking uh, away a lot uh, from us, from maybe, you know, the emotional side of things, the fact that uh, people are afraid to start a conversation these days because it's much easier to just go back to your phone or do something with it. Uh, at the same time, obviously, you know, uh, with each, uh, with each, advent or advance uh, comes certain limitations, right? Um, in India, three hours per day spent on smartphones, right? And this is across different age groups. Uh, and this is uh, considered to be at an average about 20% increase in the last two years alone. Uh, one hour per day time Indians spend using applications on their smartphones. Um, I was told that uh, maybe yesterday somebody from you know the app industry was also here, and um, uh, as a digital advertiser, also um, you know uh, the fact that Google only gives you a certain amount of reach, certain amount of results, you have to also start looking elsewhere, and that's where the applications world comes in, right? So um, uh, the the kitsch term or the the fun term that we use in our industry is, can you amplify it? Right. So anything that you uh, that you tend to do, right, um, or information that you want to seed out, can you visualize it being an application? Uh, if you can do that, that's another area where you can actually make it a lot more easier for your audience to consume information uh, that you want to convey. I'm told that NDPC also has an app. Uh, am I correct in assuming that? Uh, and what do you exactly do with that application? As in, what does one it's basically an internal communication app. Right. And also an integration platform for our pages like Zebra, we have got a different integration. We have got VSS of chat. Mm -hmm. So many things. Basically an internal you know, sure. communication. Sure. 
so is there uh, is there anything uh, in that app that allows maybe you know uh, one of the one of the thermal projects that you're doing uh, somewhere or something to do with solar energy? Um, do you do you see this being useful where you know the location that you're going to set up this say project in, uh, maybe to educate the people of that particular place, you could actually have all that information embedded with, within an app, yes. which which you could. All, all Right, of course. So, uh, and what kind of content are you uh, using within that? Is it, when I say content, in terms of format? Is it videos or? Uh, Both. Right. Let me, right. JPEG and videos. Right. No, still, we are, we are struggling with videos. Hmm. Uh, what should be the uh, size of videos? Right. Because server is an issue with this. Hmm. And we don't want to shift to any other common server. Right. Right. I mean, ultimately, it's it's as simple as uh, trying to find more space on a shared server, yes. which you know has maximum uptime, and we that. We have a dedicated big server for this. Right. Because we know the traffic is going to increase. Because this is not only for employees; this is also for family members. Right. And right. Uh, certain, you know, certain services are not available to them. Right. This is also applicable to eligibility is retired. Interesting. So, uh, while I obviously see you've made the right effort in that direction and you're obviously uh, going through that motion of uh, understanding what the issues are yeah. and trying to address them, um, I wouldn't say it's a suggestion, but always, uh, you know, going back to an earlier point that I made, always think about um, the end user when you would be designing, you know, certain things. Certainly, content so is an issue which we are uh, debating. Right. So we are looking for content writers and also family members are because other than uh, communication guides, uh. because that is not the sole domain of them. So many people write, many designated uh, housewives are there who can do all the children. In fact, the fact that the private sector is very good at giving names to things, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's the same thing. It's the same thing you do. We just uh, you know, hire somebody from an IMA or, a, or an Ivy League school and give him crores of money and say, okay, you give us a name and that's it. Right? Uh, case in point being Paytm. But uh, what you said has, has a much deeper rooted um, advantage and the fact that uh, maybe it's not been articulated well, but that's how the digital world or uh, consumption of content is actually happening or the virality of it has actually taken place all, all, uh, all around the world. And that term is UGC. How many, how many are aware of UGC as a term? So UGC stands for uh, user generated content, correct. And uh, what you're doing is, is, is essentially UGC. Right? You're giving the power back in the hands of the user and asking them to give their version of it. Correct. And so, you know, the, the fact that I, I don't think why I needed to come here and say this because you obviously know what you're doing. Uh, but interestingly enough, the fact that uh, it's very encouraging to, you know, come across uh, you know, these instances where you realize that uh, the PSU sector is not, uh, not that far behind. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, how you propagate that. And I think, <laughs> fair enough, I love to get on that bandwagon. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the fact that uh, the basics are there and, and essentially, uh, you know, uh, exactly how that needs to be utilized uh, from uh, also uh, the end user's point of view, how they will consume that. Uh, so that's very encouraging to see.
All right. Uh, we uh, essentially, uh, you know, through this uh, advent of uh, social media, a lot of platforms came about over the last uh, uh, decade or so. And uh, a lot of them have gone on to surpass their usage in, uh, you know, that specific market. Case uh, point, uh, the, the point I want to make was uh, with uh, Snapchat, for example. Um, but Facebook, uh, back on the back of data learning, right, or machine learning, um, bases the kind of content that you consume um, on Facebook. You would notice that you would get similar, you know, content on your newsfeed. Now that is not just a simple um, uh, algo check as we call it in our parlance or algorithm check. It is actually based on somebody sitting and analyzing uh, data coming out of different servers in different locations and feeding back. Uh, you know, it's as, as simple as um, uh, going to a really busy market and sorting out you know, different kinds of products and saying you know, this section of the society will buy this product, this age group will come and buy this product. And that takes a lot of, uh, you know, technological effort, of course, but also a lot of, you know, sharp brains working around the clock, trying to make sense of how that, uh, you know, information is processed. So, uh, to a large extent, it is, uh, which is why, you know, you need to be very, very responsible about the choices you make. No, so Instagram is a Facebook company. I hope everybody is aware of it. Yeah. So, they bought over Instagram. So, yeah. No, Twitter is integrated. That So, every... Every time uh, uh, you attribute a certain tweet which helps you tag on back at Facebook or vice versa, it still attributes to those respective platforms. Uh, Twitter will continue to be uh, a sole entity by itself. Uh, and uh, that has nothing to do with you know, attribution to Facebook. Uh, but why Facebook leads the charge in India is again because of uh, uh, the, the uh, format of content. right? So visual content, uh, not only yes, but also largely uh, you know, the, the world over is what is consumed the most. I mean, Instagram has taken visual content to a totally new level. People have made careers out of Instagramming. Correct. Um, and you know, uh, from an age of uh, engineers to scientists to doctors, we are now at an age of uh, you know, storytellers, uh, where you know bloggers have equal importance, if not more. Right? Uh, as long as you can break the code and understand what exactly are you trying to communicate and you can reach out to your TG. Um, so hashtag has existed pretty much uh, you know, as, as old as Twitter. So the only difference is uh, these guys took it to another level of how to use it. Um, that's an interesting point you made there. So everybody's aware of what, an hashtag, what a hashtag does, what is it used for. If uh, from a definition point of view is everybody aware of why one uses it on social media? Great. So you've you've explained what it uh, it does. Um, I will very quickly summarize what it means. A hashtag is essentially um, a certain way of formalizing or putting into order the content that you're posting. So, uh, in simpler terms, it's a filing system for social media. Right? So, every time you use, as you rightly pointed out, every time you use a hashtag, so say hashtag NDPC, uh, everything around NPPC would also latch on to that and therefore garner more traffic. And every time somebody searches for, say, hashtag NPPC, it will also show up what uh, was being said, I, either you know, in terms of what is being said now, currently, or what was said. You know. So it is actually a filing system which helps you keep whatever was said in the online world forever. Right. Right. Um, Instagram obviously uh, has taken it to another level where it helps you latch on to other hashtags as well, right? So, um, and in fact, um, uh, that gets me to the question of is NDPC already on Instagram? Because that's one platform I didn't search for NDPC on. Are you guys already on uh, Instagram? Right. Not apps, 
but uh, somebody who might have posted. Uh, right, right. Um, so yeah, I mean, right. Um, so there is there is a unique way uh, that you know you can use uh, hashtags on Instagram to actually get not only more uh, you know traffic towards you, but also uh, more attention uh, and organic reach. And that is as simple as actually uh, putting the hashtag in the comment section as opposed to the body copy of the post. Um, and also whilst doing that you have to make sure that you uh, use at least five spaces or which are denoted by uh, full stops. So actually put in five full stops and then start with the hashtag. Right? So that's something that um, uh, was started with by early Instagrammers to actually go beyond uh, you know the, the character limit and not overcrowd uh, what they're saying through their uh, posts, right? Um, and yeah, from a from a professional uh, uh, platform point of view, again, LinkedIn is uh, you know becoming more and more relevant in India. Uh, of course, I feel it's it's a glorified uh, job board because these days people don't go on Nokri, but they go on LinkedIn to find a job. Uh, but uh, it is again a platform that cannot be ignored, especially where it is about corporate public relations or wherever you want to seed uh, corporate level content, leadership, thought leadership, uh, point of view articles, uh, this is a great platform to do it on. Right? Um, it helps you get a point across uh, to a very specific audience which is uh, pretty much uh, serious about the kind of content that they are consuming. Um, and this gets me to this uh, you know, final slide of uh, Interestingly, how uh, the purpose of access between rural and urban India uh, is, and if you notice, uh, the preference, the preferences are the same. The order differs from urban to rural, and those preferences uh, are entertainment, communication, and social networking. But interestingly enough, um, and I, I found this rather surprising, it's actually rural India which prefers to consume more of communication level content and urban India which is more just an entertainment that goes to speak how or what kind of lives we're leaving uh, we're leading in India uh, especially in the urban cities um, but it's it's very important to you know take heed to this uh, particular um, stat and understand that uh, information and, and the way it's consumed in, in rural India uh, or maybe you know the format that they consume it in is obviously uh, a lot more important to them uh, versus urban India. Or my analogy to this particular data and purely and uh, you know uh, a personal thought is that urban India is way too busy with their modern day living. Uh, you know you're probably spending two hours, three hours on an average in traffic every day. You have you know uh, an average of 10 to 11 hours uh, in the office. Uh, so that takes away a major chunk of your day. When you want to come back, you don't want to again think about you know what's happening around the world or you know, uh, consume more of uh, information as opposed to maybe going on to an app like a Hotstar or Netflix and consuming you know some entertainment content. Versus rural India, which actually seeks information uh, you know through these mediums. Right? So for for them to actually find credible information, they feel uh, using their smartphones to get to the desired destination and consume that kind of uh, you know information that they need is a lot more uh, important a task as opposed to entertainment. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I would invite any questions, any um, any feedback, anything that you would like to know. Beyond what I Great, that'd be nice. Yeah. Right. Great. Yeah, I look forward to that. All right, so uh, that's about it, I think. Any questions? One more time. Huh? All right. Indian Thanks a lot. Sorry, yeah. Please. This Indian uh, market is continuing to grow. So, so uh, it has already bypassed the US market. So, it to grow for another two, three years before? Oh, yes. Um, I have an interesting slide on my phone. I don't think I can uh, project that. but. I'll show it to you. Uh, there's a very interesting infographic which uh, has broken down um, uh, the markets that is stalling out 
uh, the markets that are only starting to break out, uh, the markets which uh, have you know, some sort of leeway to go in terms of further growth, and the markets where you know stagnation is set in, um, and it's based on a you know XY uh, matrix sort of design, and India clearly is in the breakout uh, section of that matrix, which essentially means that even with the 31 percent, sorry. terms of as as compared to no so yeah 31 percent as opposed to more higher penetration in other countries yeah, yeah of course uh, you know that's that's the basic truth but a very interesting point uh, because you're mentioning the you know the gdp part of it and that ties back to uh, so your uh, uh, if i could have your attention sir please um, so that ties into his um the sinas uh, uh, analogy on the gdp piece ties it back to your question on growth um, you have to understand that India is unique. Uh, we'd like to think, obviously, you know, as, a, uh, as fellow countrymen. Uh, but from a business standpoint, why it is unique is because you can boast of, uh, you know, draws and profits in a business, and still go out and have a very satisfying full meal for under 100 rupees. Right? Um, now that is a comparison to other countries where uh, just the GDP growth is not the best measurement of it. At the same time, the GDP growth doesn't necessarily mean inflation grows with it, right? Because it's the choices you make uh, that will help you uh, either get burdened down with inflation or ride along with it, right? Um, and interestingly enough, that's the sort of uh, dichotomy uh, which we go through as as countrymen in in this uh, country. At the same time, business businesses from uh, Western world find as an opportunity, uh, and which is why they're a lot more resourceful coming into uh, our country uh, on the back of uh, you know uh, one of the biggest data uh, you know uh, capabilities uh, and the company I'm essentially talking about is Amazon. Uh, and can you know do uh, millions or rather billions worth of business uh, coming out of India, which is why if you notice my slide on uh, the the comparative products that India prefers to shop for online versus other countries, it is uh, totally different. So if we are starting off right now with uh, trying to shop for say clothes or footwear, uh, clearly we'll reach to the point where we also want to you know largely want to buy uh, high tech equipment or so, at least for the next 10 years, um, and you know, this is something again which we have studied on the back of data. The the growth in terms of commerce alone, and uh, and online uh, mediums helping us achieve that uh, growth, is definitely slated for the next 10 years. Uh, if you take again Amazon as an example, it is not going to make any profits in India till the year 2025. Right? There's a reason why they're still pouring in that much money. Um, I don't know if you're aware of the kind of margins that these organizations make on a category basis. If I were to choose uh, mobile category, which is uh, you know the industry that I represent, uh, the margin is uh, sometimes as low as one percent. So uh, the fact that they still can operate in that margin. at its peak for almost a decade if not more, used to give margins to distributors to the tune of 20 rupees per device. 
a device in those days which used to sell anything between uh, at least six to seven thousand rupees, if not more. I'm talking about a fairly basic device uh, that people would buy, and that's the margin you would get, twenty rupees. Um, today, that same Nokia is trying to enter the market and is having the most difficult time because. Uh, so we have this saying that uh, in the in the telecom industry. <laughs> water and 25% Oppo and Vivo holdings. So you see them everywhere, right? And uh, that's again a great example of how these two brands, uh, who are actually again cousins of the same group, uh, came into India and said, you know, let's uh, actually give or pass on the benefits back to our uh, distributors. They said, you earn 20% margin. I don't have a problem with that, but I want to capture the market. So. You know, these are opportunities that uh, unfortunately only Western world is seeing or for that matter China which is growing at such a rapid pace and being so enterprising is seeing as an opportunity. We don't see that, right? We don't do that uh, within, from within our country and which is why we as, as a country have not been able to create a single good uh, notable product company. We are very good with services. We are exceptionally well with, uh, you know, IT obviously. I mean, that's known the world over. But whenever it comes to a product-related company, that's where we start, right? And that's how the the other uh, markets are coming and taking advantage of the opportunity. Here we are. Yes, okay, perfect. So this is uh, a web web app. Yep. Right. I just step down so that I could see it in full view. It's uh, Mr. Raghuvar Das. He used yeah. to be the labor. Yeah, he uh, is just now inaugurated. He just now inaugurated, not just on the app. Oh, okay. So, this is the app. He used to be the head of the labor union in Tata Steel. Yes, so, that's yes, how yes, I remember yes, him yes, growing yes, up yes, in Jamshedpur. Yes, so. <laughs>
to join us for a small tea break following which we have the next speaker is already 